Drugs kill more Americans than car crashes. We'll hear from the local mother fighting for change. The city streets don't clear themselves. Plow drivers are battling the snow and they're asking for your help. I'm Ron Hawkins. And I'm Tracy Minarchuk. We're out at the Rotary Nature Preserve, and winter looks beautiful out here, doesn't it? Uh, it sure does, yes. And you know, we're getting to that point in winter where it just seems like it's never ending. I know, people get a little cabin fever. Yeah, A little I know. crazy. And they're sitting on their couches watching Netflix all day. They're just not <laughs> moving around. <laughs> get out and enjoy the parks. I agree. Yes, and speaking of winter, our Public Works Department has been plowing streets this season, but they need your help. Photographer Nick Anderson took a ride with Public Works Street Director Mark Meyer to see firsthand what challenges drivers are up against. I've been doing it now 12 years. Yeah, I wouldn't do anything else but this. Cars and trash cans, that's our, that's our biggest enemy right now. Be nice if people would actually when they see snow is on the ground or snow is in the forecast make sure they do everything in their, in their power to get the cars off the roads in the driveways uh, we don't want to do damage to parked cars here we're going around one right now so you can see it makes it kind of difficult uh, and then same thing with the trash cans trash cans make uh, make it kind of a, like an obstacle course for us. Uh, it slows us down quite a bit, and it actually, uh, you know, the level of service goes down when we have all these trash cans and parked cars out the road as obstacles to try to go around. We don't want to knock them over. It just makes uh, oop, uh, more work for the, even the garbage hauler when he comes out. I know it'd probably make a difficult job for you. You gotta go in and around. It's, it's basically for emergency vehicles, they can get them on the road safely. Also, your postal service, they won't deliver your mail if, you, if they can't get close enough to your mailbox. Next week, they're talking uh, warm-up coming up, and so what's gonna happen is things are gonna start melting, and uh, if we're not able to get all the way up to the curb, you're gonna start seeing puddles and ice, is, ice forming up in front of people's houses. And it just cre creates a lot of hassle for the, uh, for the residents. To me, it's kind of peaceful, you know, when you're out there plowing and, and it's, you know, early in the morning, no traffic, the snow might be falling lightly, and it's just something uh, real peaceful about plowing. of parking regulations, you can check out the city's website. Go to Public Works Streets Division where you can download a brochure. 
Over 2,400 people were arrested for DWI during a holiday enforcement campaign. Sergeant Eric Gadboy is going to talk with us about White Bear Lake's involvement as well as some general driving safety tips. Thanks for being here. It's your first time here. Yes, it is. My You're pleasure. Very brave. <laughs> <laughs> Nervous is, I think, the correct uh, word. No, so. you'll be fine. And we appreciate you being here. So tell us a little bit about um, some of the winter driving. What would be one of your tips for winter driving for people? Uh, I think one of the biggest things that people could do uh, to avoid accidents uh, is slow down. Um, anytime there's ice or snow in the roadway, obviously it makes it a little bit more slippery. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple other things you could do is uh, make sure that you clear all the ice uh, and snow off your windshield and off, also off the roof of your car, because that could be a road hazard as well. Oh, I see that a lot where people will just put a little hole. Yeah, they have a little <laughs> circle where they can see out and everything You can else actually be sighted for that too. Oh gosh, and side windows and mirrors and yeah. all that needs to be scraped off. Yes. What about headlights? Headlights. Um, if you look under Minnesota State Statute 169.48, uh, that actually spells out when you have to have your headlights on. Um, specifically, anytime after sunset, between sunrise. Um, also, when there's limited visibility, uh, such as fog or snow or sleeting, things like that. A good rule of thumb is if you have your uh, head wipers on, your windshield wipers on, you should probably have your headlights on as well. The big thing is you want to be seen um, and be able to see exactly where you're driving. So okay. like at dusk in the morning, you might have stopped for gas and the lights are all on and you leave the gas station and you don't have your lights on. I think that happens a lot, Yes, right? especially nowadays with cars that have automatic headlights. Um, sometimes they don't trip. The little sensors don't realize that there is enough ambient light. Uh, so you actually have to kind of be smarter than your car and know that your headlights should be on. Okay, so don't I'll trust and, that. Exactly. I'll try and be smarter than my car. <laughs> Good point. Well, I don't, I don't know about you. Do that. Well, I think it's difficult nowadays because uh, the newer cars have those fancy LED dash lights. So yeah. I know my very first car, if the headlights weren't on, I couldn't see the dashboard. Right. But nowadays with the oh, fancy lights, that, I, think I think a lot of times people are confused with that. They think their headlights are on just because the dashboard is so bright. And they should remember their headlights, even if it's the, the automatic lights that come on, your taillights aren't on. Exactly. And so people yeah. behind you might not see you in front of them because mm -hmm. of the light. So, so well, let's talk about this uh, uh, enforcement campaign. Just kind of give us a, a good overview of, of what it's all about, who we, did we partner with. Uh, sure. Uh, and again, we're talking about the DWI Holiday Wave. Yeah. Uh, that's an initiative that started um, about two weeks before Thanksgiving and goes all the way till the end of December and it's extra officers working outside of their normal shift, specifically focusing on DWI arrests. Um, and usually what happens is they work Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, so usually kind of the most busiest traffic days, um, and also with the parties and stuff that, ha that go on with Fridays and Saturdays. Um, but what happens is uh, officers are out there conducting extra traffic enforcement, making sure the roadways are safe. Okay. And distracted driving and seatbelt enforcement, those are separate. Explain those maybe, what, when do we look for those or how do we look for those? Sure, uh, well besides normal shifts, uh, which we could obviously be looking for those, uh, a lot of times we'll have focuses on seat belts or specifically distracted driving. Um, we actually designate months, uh, so the month of July is uh, a whole stepped up speed enforcement month. Um, but with these initiatives, anything's fair game. So if you're not using turn signal, we might stop you. Um, just any reason to make a contact with somebody to make sure that they are being safe and sober. Just a reminder to them, we're out there. And we want people to know we're not we're not hiding, right? Yes, we, no. We um, <laughs> actually, part of the uh, motto is that it's high visibility. So when officers are working these details, they have a traffic safety vest on, um, and it says DWI enforcement. We're not trying to be sneaky. We want you to know that we're out there. And in a certain sense, that makes it so uh, it prevents people from drinking and driving because they know we're out there specifically looking for it. Mm -hmm. And not just those times, but every time. We want them to get in the habit of not expecting when we're out there making stops to wear your seatbelt, don't drive distracted, don't drink and drive. For sure. And those are really, I mean, you talk about uh, it's not really a secret. You're not trying to, you know, uh, sneak up on people as far as these enforcements. It seems as though we hear about it weeks in advance that, okay, coming up here in the Thanksgiving season or the other holiday season, or I'm sure you'll do it in the summer too, for warning people so they can plan in advance. Yes, right. most definitely. We'll even see it on the uh, Department of Public Safety's website or Facebook page. Right. So. And some White Bear Lake officers won some awards for Toward Zero Death? Yes, uh, part of the uh, Ramsey County Traffic Safety Initiative. Uh, a lot of officers were invited to uh, a banquet in October, 
and it was specifically for the hard work that they um, produced and the high numbers. Um, I actually have a few numbers here. Um, if we look at fiscal year uh, 2015, the White Bear Lake Police Department arrested over 212 DWIs. Yeah. Um, and we actually had the highest test uh, throughout the whole state in the fiscal year. We had a, it was a 0.38 breath alcohol concentration, mm -hmm. which wow. is amazing. That's, that's, that's wow. close to death, right? That's, that's up there, that's yeah. almost comatose. Yeah. So it's, mm. it's, it's serious. Scary that they were driving. Um, and uh, for our speed wave in July, uh, we actually finished number six in the state with 184 tags. Um, that's without actually including state patrol. State patrol is kind of a hard one to beat because they have so many officers statewide. And so, yeah. well, good yep. job. Yeah. I mean, good job, White Bear Police. Off and the then, street. Yeah, and everybody involved. But stay in off that. the street. Yeah. That's what we want you to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't want to be the highest right. and have all these numbers. So get off the road if you're doing something wrong, right? Definitely. Well, thank you yeah. for being on the show. Thank nice you very job. much. Sure. Appreciate it. <laughs> We're going to take a short break, but first, here's some more winter safety advice. Though some of us may debate the virtues of winter, I think we can all agree that winter driving can be stressful and potentially dangerous. I'm Sergeant John Vetti with a few tips to keep you safe on the roads. It's a good idea to prepare your car for winter to avoid breakdowns. Many mechanics offer winterizing services to make sure everything is in working order. You should also equip your car with an emergency kit. Check weather conditions before you head out and avoid travel if conditions are dangerous. When you're on the road, slow down on slick and icy roadways. Driving too fast is the cause of most crashes during winter. Brake properly to avoid sliding. If you're driving on snow or ice, start slowly and brake gently. If you start to slide, ease off the gas or brakes and steer in the direction you're sliding until you regain traction. Make sure to stay alert and keep a safe distance from snow plows. And of course, put down your phone and put on your seatbelt. Check out the Minnesota Department of Public Safety for more winter driving information. Be safe out there this winter. I'll see you next time. I think Tracy and I got it pretty easy. <laughs> you know, I think that there's a lot of planning that goes into it, a lot of behind the scenes uh, prep work uh, and uh, scheduling guests and that sort of thing. And uh, I just sometimes I wonder, gosh, do people think that me and Tracy do all that work? And so we've got it easy. We just come in and we sit down and we interview the guest and most of that stuff is already prepared for us. The death of one mother's son to a heroin overdose devastated her family. She channeled her grief into action rather than letting it destroy them. She has been trying ever since to break the stigma associated with addiction and hopes to educate the public on the need to do something about this growing epidemic. What we need is an entire community to come together. I didn't want this for my son or my family. I don't want this for anybody else's family. For nearly three years, the Lewis family has been mourning the heroin overdose death of Lori Lewis's oldest son, Ryan. Though she says her suffering hasn't gotten easier, her path to action has. She wants other families dealing with addiction to know help is out there. I don't think people know there are resources out there, so I want to keep this in front of our community and um, help break the st stigma so people can get out there and talk about it. Um, and start looking for support. Lewis speaks publicly and often about her story and partners with law enforcement, parents, and addiction recovery centers. She recently held a documentary screening called Generation Found in Oakdale. I started using when I was in seventh grade. At the age of 12, I started smoking marijuana. I was using every day. The last three years of my use, I was shooting heroin. The film features the Houston, Texas community coming together to provide recovery support for kids fresh out of treatment, something that's lacking in most other parts of the country, including Minnesota. 
Lori believes if people talk more about addiction, the less they'll find a need to hide it. Her own family kept her son's heroin addiction a secret for six months, fearful of judgment. We felt ashamed. Um, we felt it was something we did. We couldn't believe this was in our home. When she finally told family and friends about Ryan, she was overwhelmed by their show of support. She hopes other families will take inspiration from her tragedy. And she talks to Ryan before every speaking engagement, asking him for guidance and support. And I do, I do feel him with me now, where I didn't for a long time, but I do, I do feel him and I feel his strength. And that's what, that's honestly what keeps me going, is to continue this fight. If you'd like to get involved or learn more about Lori's efforts, you can visit and like her Facebook page. As we mentioned earlier, we're coming to you from Rotary Nature Preserve, and we're going to learn a little bit more about our park system here in White Bear Lake. Parks and Rec lead Mike Natterstead joins us. I know, Parks and Rec? <laughs> nah, not You're so much rec, more, more parks. <laughs> um, I guess, what, to, what would you like to know? More All right. About the trail tell us, system. Yeah, tell um, us about the trail system well, here. Yeah, yeah let's talk trail about system, this, this park uh, here. This what? this park here is is actually pretty awesome because it hooks up with a lot of the regional parks that are kind of with Ramsey County, the townships. So from this park itself, you can uh, basically get around to a lot of the other trail systems. Um, we have 11 miles of park trails, most of which are used. Um, in the summer, obviously, but you know, and you're we, talking about the park trails and white bear. Throughout, this throughout one. white bear, oh. and you can get on our website and actually map out, um, which then, like I said, you can uh, connect with some of the other trails that are around our communities. Um, and then also, you know, don't forget about the winter use. Obviously, we had some more snow. It's uh, a lot of our parks, like down at Lakewood and some of our more hidden parks. Um, there's a lot of the cross country skiing, snowshoeing and uh, so they do get used. We don't plow a lot of our walking trails, um, just a few for you know the diversity so that we can uh, that they can be used for. I was gonna for that. say this so, one looks good. This no, one looks this this one we do of. we do take care of because uh, it connects with the parkway and like I said, some of the other regional and outer township and cities well, trails. Let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the the different parks in White Bear Lake and what are some that are uh, unique for some features versus maybe some other features that other parks don't have. Yeah, you know, it's kind of what you're looking for. You know, obviously, you know, every community has specialty parks you know ours are known you know we have a great skating facilities in some of ours along with pavilions that uh, attract for picnicking uh, family outings um, graduation parties family reunions um, we've got a frisbee golf um, set up down Lakewood. at, down Lakewood, at Hills. Lakewood. Yep. Oh, you go ahead and get that call. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just wait for you. <laughs> that's hey, that's a, that's one of our parks. That's, that's called. Oh yeah, that's life. Well, that's you're your the life, lead huh? park guy, so <laughs> you're very important. Yeah. So, um, and then this this park here itself is more for nature. Um, you know, we've got the boardwalk that goes through the swamp area, then connects out um, into the nature preserve, which is and um, that a chip goes trail. Through. Correct. Okay, yeah, I always thought maybe the, just went halfway and stopped. No, there's a big roundabout actually out there, and then it also connects off the parkway, which uh, you can connect up and, and walk back down this way. So it's a great park here. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Nice. Now, so you did mention a little bit about cross-country skiing, and that seems to be a sport that's really kind of blooming. Uh, yeah. What parks have got That would be Lakewood Hills, and okay. they're actually grooming that. I, but you know, with all the snow, they're struggling. So, uh -huh. but that's uh, that is our biggest park that we have in White Bear Lake. I want to say it's it's 11 acres, uh -huh. or maybe or 16. Don't I better not quote me on that. <laughs> I should know that, but uh, we have a lot of wooded area out there. Mm -hmm. You know, and then also, you know, we have Handlos Pond that gets used. There's a fishing pier out there, mm -hmm. um, and then all the activities. There's soccer. Um, you know, we've got the playground area. Um, there's uh, actually trails, a system that goes through the woods, and the frisbee golf out there is big, actually, uh -huh. as you probably it's would very know. Very big, yes. <laughs> it's gotten bigger, it seems. So they keep adding or they keep um, keeping up the different courses in there. Correct. 
Yeah. And so all this information is on the is on the city um, website. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you go to public. Or, you uh, probably go. You could. I, I think it's through city hall or through our public works, and then you could link onto our parks, and then just kind of steer your way through there. And you know, you'll know what park we have. Twenty three parks that are in White Bear. Out of all those eleven of them, you can reserve for you know picnicking, like I said, or family outings. So I know Podvin is a big one. Podvin's a big one. Uh, West Lakewood Park, Hills Park Lake, too. West Park, you know, we put that new uh, playground apparatus down there. Mm -hmm. That is a big because that's also connected with the beach. It's got the zip um, line on there. That's... That is where the line <laughs> is at. Is the zip line? Have you ever been no. up there? That oh, is yeah. correct. Everybody anyway, so they, get, the they need line. to call and reserve. <laughs> They yes. need to call and reserve probably well in advance. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, as far as I, I want to say, last year I think we had 157 parks reserved. Wow. That's so nice. it was a great accomplishment. And we just try to grow it every year and stay on top of it. So. Well, thank you so much for yeah. being here. We appreciate, appreciate it. We're it. No problem. running out of time. And since we're standing here in the Nature Preserve, it seems fitting our next story took place here in warmer weather during a CERT drill. CERT organizers, and CERT is an acronym for Community Emergency Response Team, are looking for people interested in helping the community. Here's a look at what you can expect. We had an accident out here on the street involving a, a large bus, school bus, and a semi-truck, okay? Many injuries. The bus was filled with vulnerable adults going to a Twins game. There may be two, three, four, five, six vulnerable adult, adults in this park, one for sure with a, a, a severe injury, and the other ones we don't have any idea. We can only assume, because everybody else was injured, that they're injured as well. What our game plan is, is that we're going to stay on the, on the paths. We want to search 30 to 40 feet on either side of the paths. And we just want to make a, a, a one trip all the way through the park to make sure we don't see anything obvious. Are you, if we do a head to toe, is she bleeding anywhere else? Because there's a lot of blood. One, two, three. Okay. We'll get you to get somebody to help you out, all right? All right, well, just stay calm. You warming up now? Yeah. Okay. Everybody has been located scenario over. We had five people that were uh, in certain spots that were more tricky than others, uh, and we set it up so both teams would have uh, a hard time dealing with what was there. There's a deceased, which is kind of a, a different situation because then it's a crime scene. Um, there's somebody that they had to uh, put in a sling. There's somebody that had a, 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 a broken foot that they had to get out and splint. Um, so we tried to, in our training, we learned all these different things. Um, and so today we got to apply them. And then uh, the last one was somebody who had a lot of blood and so they had to work on uh, controlling the, the bleeding. And so we tried to get one of all the different things that we learned um, just to test their abilities. I think we worked well as a team. We're learning and we'll get it down. I think everybody worked together great. Everybody had stuff to make it work and mm -hmm. fill in the blanks. And, and we'll just keep improving with each practice right session like this that we do. So we, we have a really good group. Absolutely. I second that too. Training is held on Monday nights and begins the end of this month. You can fill out an application on the city's website if you're interested. Coming up after the break, young ladies throw down during a night of self-defense education.
Welcome back. The White Bear Lake Police Department is continuing its efforts to teach girls how to defend themselves. Here's that story. Watch how she drives with her hips now. <laughs> If I'm moving, I shoot my, my butt out, my, I'm on the side, and I'll come back. That was really great to get those girls involved. They're very quiet when we start, and by the end, they're very vocal and into doing the self-defense. I see that. <laughs> yeah, and we talk about um, being aware of your surroundings and keeping your head up and seeing, you know, things that are out of place and stuff. So mm -hmm. That's along great program. with all the physical stuff. Yeah. yeah, nice job. Yeah, juniors and seniors. So keep an eye out for that. We'll be having more in the future. Sounds good. We're just about out of time, but we want to remind you to help us keep our city safe. Check out the department's crime blog where we post information about criminal activity in our city. And remember to like Lake Area Beat on Facebook. We like you, so we want you to like us. That's right. <laughs> and we want you to be safe this winter season, so buckle up and slow down. Thanks for watching this edition of Lake Area Beat. I'm Tracy Menarchek. And I'm Ron Hawkins. See you next time.